Hello friends, EJ here from the back porch again with you. Tonight I want to talk about Case XX pocket knives. Uh, a little bit of disclaimer as I start, I am no expert, but what I want to bring you tonight is just a little bit of a survey about how as a picker and as an antique person that you can keep a close eye out on pocket knives and possibly use that to your advantage. Whether you're a collector um, or a reseller, or just a picker or a yard seller or something along those lines. I'm going to give you just a little bit of uh, information that might help you in your journey about case pocket knives. Again, by no means is this a synopsis uh, about all encompassing uh, in case knives, uh, but I want to tell you a little bit of something that might help you as you go along. Uh, so as we start out about case pocket knives, um, it is a company that is probably the most uh, collectible pocket knife company uh, there is out there. Uh, all the good grandpas always carried case knives. Now there are several other brands, several other brands that are, are marketable, uh, several other brands that hold some value, but uh, tonight's discussion will be on case knives. And I'm uh, going to put a little link at the bottom of the page uh, that will give you a good um, reference to how to identify um, the age and type of material and type of knife uh, of a case knife. Uh, now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on aging these knives. That's a topic all by itself. Again, this is just a little bit of a survey about how you can uh, use pocket knives to better your portfolio, if you will, as a picker. So that's what we're going to talk about. So a little bit about case pocket knives. Um, all, most all pocket knives will have case on them if they're a case knife. And uh, an identif identifier for case knives will be right down here. Uh, at the very bottom of the blade. Now a professional is going to call that a tang stamp and um, those are different for different years uh, and there will be different dots. You will hear people talk about say a nine dot or a three dot or something along those lines just to give a little bit of a quick uh, understanding of the way that that works. Um, if it is a say a 1970s stamp which this is and it has uh, nine dots, as this one does, and then it will be a 1971 model. Um, the beginning year, 1970, will have ten dots. 71, nine, 72, eight, 73, seven, and so on. And that's kind of the way the dot system works. It differs in the 2000s when it goes up into X's and X's in different locations and things like that. Most of the knives that we're going to be discussing here tonight uh, will be into the 2000s, but this particular beauty right here is a 1971 Eisenhower. It is a small knife, two blade knife. Uh, this particular blade here is actually a nail file and this blade over here is a uh, sharp primary blade. Uh, this one is in very close to mint if not perfect condition. May have a little bit of shelf wear but there's no nicks, no, uh, no damage and that's what you want to look at. The better the condition, as is with anything, the better the condition, the pocket knife, the more valuable it's going to be. Look for sharpening marks on the blade. Look for broken blades. Look for a good crisp snap. Notice that. That means that the uh, spring is good. Uh, make sure it doesn't have any uh, oxidation or anything on the blades. And uh, a little bit of a side note about this. Um, they call it the Eisenhower because this is the style that President Eisenhower I had the company make in mass to give out to his friends and colleagues uh, on Capitol Hill. So um, this is uh, an example of that. This I don't believe is one that he gave out, but this is a good example. Also a little side note, uh, any of these knives that you see on here tonight will either be for sale on uh, my uh, Instagram page or my um, eBay uh, channel, eBay store, um, or um, of course the Facebook page at the store. The links of those will be in the video. Uh, so this next one, this is a discontinued model. It is a Texas toothpick. Um, it's discontinued. They still make the small or tiny toothpick which is just like this except about uh, half the size. But this is a discontinued model, Texas toothpick, a great example of a never carried, never used knife. Look how shiny that is. These are what's called bolsters. And they don't have any scuffing on them. There are um, no sharpening marks on the blade and it does have a good crisp close. Uh, this particular knife probably has a value of $75 to $80, somewhere in that range. Um, most, again, most of these knives are in the 2000s. This is a gunstock 
and um, I, I guess they call it that because this design kind of looks like the rear of a rifle or a shotgun. And um, this is also a sy synthetic handle patterned after a um, like barn lumber. It's a double knife, double blade knife. Uh, a good particular piece. All of these are in great condition. That's probably also a $75 knife. Now this is a version, this particular piece here is a version of the famous Case Trapper. Now they have a mini trapper and they have um, a trapper which is bigger than this. Most trappers are two blades. This is a trapper slim or slim line because of how slim it is. All the trappers are in this design but this one is a single blade slim line from the 2000s in jade green of a synthetic jigged bone handle. Jigged, uh, when you hear somebody say jigged bone, it's kind of uh, this design of how the handle is uh, notched out and um, it, it's made to look like a bone. It's not actually bone, um, but it's a synthetic handle called jigged bone in jade green. Now this is a little different here. This is uh, Case's design. They call it a pin knife, but this particular handle material is genuine stag, which means it's made from antler. Makes it a little bit more valuable. There are a lot of collectors out there who collect stag handled knives in either fixed blades or um, pocket knives in this particular uh, design. This is a, a, a case pin knife. It is a two blade, very nice little knife. As a matter of fact, on the blade, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, it says Genuine India Stag, which I'm supposing that the antler that made these bone handles or these stag handles is from India. Uh, that brings me to another thought that um, there are lots of different collectors of case knives. You have collectors that collect specific styles like pen or um, Eisenhower or gunstock, particular styles. Uh, you have collectors that uh, collect particular colors like red. Uh, some people collect synthetic yellow. Uh, you have uh, age people uh, who like a certain era. People like 1940s and 1950s or some like just the 60s or things like that. Some like prior to the 70s. So when you're buying these knives, look for those different niche markets. And remember, it's always important to buy quality. If you can find good stuff, you can sell it at a good price. If you find mediocre stuff, mediocre price. Moving along, here's a pretty famous brand. Uh, of course, brand is Case, but this is a particular style that's pretty, uh, pretty famous. Some people love them, some people hate them. This is called the Barlow, Case Barlow. This is a two-blade Barlow, and um, it is in a basket weave pattern in the handle. Such is the story also with what Case uh, they marketed as the Sodbuster. Uh, the Sodbuster was a working man's knife. Uh, it was plastic handled and it's uh, very kind of crude, but a working knife. Uh, they weren't ge uh, generally as expensive uh, in the collector market. There are some that are expensive, but for the most part, they're uh, not as highly sought after uh, as some of the other makes. Uh, this one is in yellow synthetic. And uh, the old timers called them yellow handles. This next knife is what's called a rust lock. And if you'll notice, it's got a little little flip thing there that uh, you can use to to uh, bring it up and and flip it. It's got a distinct style. This is also in the yellow synthetic handle. Now, uh, rust lock indicates a that there is a locking mechanism. This is a locking blade designed for you to be able to use it without worrying about it closing on your fingers. And that's a particular thing here. Uh, in order to close this particular one, you have to slide that lock over and push it back up. These are highly collectible. A lot of people like the rust locks. Another collectible, highly collectible knife is the Congress. And the Congress is a four, four blade knife. And if you'll notice on a Congress, there's a little curve at the bottom of this. It's not level, it's not fat, flat. And that is a, uh, a designing factor of the Congress knife. You'll see those in many different brand, but specifically in case knives. Now, if you look at this one real close, uh, it will say Crandall on it instead of Case. Uh, it is a special brand made by Case. It's called the Family Series. And um, it is, um, uh, actually it's called the Family Brands Series, but it, it's made by Case. But some of the family that originally made Case knives back in the 1800s 
uh, shared the last name of Crandall. So they did this in uh, honor and memory of them. This is a case knife uh, branded after them. It is a four blade knife. Uh, generally, the more blades, maybe the more collectability, some people will say. Uh, not always the truth, but I'll promise you if you can find a good Congress knife, you're looking at $100 plus, and I think this one's easily a hundred and a quarter. Uh, this next knife, some people again love them, some people hate them. This is a small muskrat, and a muskrat has two identical blades on each side. This one is adorned in genuine stag. It is a great example. I particularly, I, I like the muskrats. Uh, I collect tiny toothpicks personally, but I like the muskrat because there's something symmetrical there. And it almost, you know, it looks like they're balanced well because both blades are the same. Some people say it's a waste, you don't need two blades the same, but I'll be honest with you, most knives of this caliber are not used anyway. This is a copper lock because it has a locking mechanism on the spine and red jigged bone from the 2000s, a beautiful piece. Now this little little rascal here is something a little different. This is a mini copperhead. Now these hold some pretty good collector collectability. Some people like them, a lot of people like them. It's a mini copperhead, they made that in a little bigger size. But you'll notice the curve of the blade, I suppose, kind of mimics the head of a snake is why they use that terminology. This one is in a polished synthetic handle. Uh, probably mid-2000s, 2007, somewhere circa in there. And one of the, I guess, most rare knives that, that I've got uh, is this particular one. It is the uh, Seahorse, uh, Seahorse Whittler. And it's got this big rounded head on it. You don't see that very often. It's a three-blade knife. It's got, uh, of course, two other blades, a small cutting blade and a small blunt end blade. Very cool piece, probably a hundred dollar knife. Have the boxes and stuff to go with these knives, which that brings up a good point that um, there is some value in uh, having the original boxes with the original knives. Uh, so hopefully that some of that has offered some insight for you uh, in the world of case knives. I think that uh, if you can find these a little along, there is a there's a cultural currency in collecting and trading knives. If you've got a pocket full of case knives, you'll never go hungry because there will always be a demand for them. The better the knife, the more the value. And um, if you get good at it, there's some good money to be made in trading case knives. So if you have any questions or you'd like to add anything to that, um, drop that in the comments section. Uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe. Hit that notification button and uh, we'll uh, send you some notifications if we ever get the chance to do another video. So case knives, I really like them and I hope you've enjoyed our time together tonight. See you later.